Welcome to the Not Watching Podcast. My name's Rob Howard and this week I'm joined by... Marcus Hurley. You can contact us on email at notwatchingpodcast at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at notwatchingpod. I've got a couple of uh, bits of news here, only hmm. there's not really been much news at all. Um, only really the, the biggest one I guess over the last few weeks is the fact that uh, they're going to do another Indiana Jones. Yeah, I heard that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so Indy 5, because it has to happen, because Disney now own it all. Mm. Uh, but yeah, f- Harrison Ford and Spielberg back. So how do we feel about another, even older Harrison Ford I'm, playing? I'm a little older... worried, um, yeah? judging by his treatment of, um, <laughs> you know, Han Solo. <laughs> oh yeah, look, that's public knowledge now. I know, uh, but Kylo... It's gonna, is, is he going to have another son? Is nah. he going to turn up and do well, the same thing? I very I much know. doubt Shia LaBeouf is going to be involved because if, if we he, see Indy going out on a rope bridge, I'm not, I'm going to stop watching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, although there would be a strange irony to that, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> you can always see it, though, can't you? It's just like he's going to become the new Sean Bean later on in life, but find his own characters and just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I guess his demise at the end of Star Wars was almost like the bit on the like road most, bridge. Y- yeah. Unfortunately, he didn't have anything to hold on to. <laughs> but luckily, we didn't see him get eaten by any crocodiles at the base. <laughs> yeah, like... well, that's it. He still hasn't ruled out that he's going to be in Star Wars or any future <laughs> Star Wars stuff. He well, might be there in flashback, maybe, or something. But yeah. He's going to be know. the only Jedi smuggler, isn't he? He's going <laughs> to he's gonna find out that he's a Jedi. Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> just like... <laughs> yeah but yeah I don't know I really don't know about more Indiana Jones mm. um, I didn't hate Crystal Skull as much as some people did no I thought there were bits in it that made me cringe the rope swinging um, I thought the revelation the at the end <laughs> yeah I thought the revelation at the end was a bit naff but see, see okay. I thought that I thought that was awesome yeah, I, but I personally. thought it's obvious because you could see the shape of the skull, so I knew it was that anyway, so it wasn't really a surprise. You know, you've watched enough episodes of X-Files, you you know what to look for. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was a little weird. I mean, I would have, I would have, it, yeah, I don't know. I thought the waterfall part was was brilliant. That always stuck with me, when the, um, the amphibious boat, the amphibious truck. Um, and then they, they go through the, it goes, oh, it, it dips three times. And then you see Indy hold onto his hat, like, no, yeah. no, no. And then they go over the waterfall and then there's like the second one. And then there's the third one, which is like the biggest dip of all. That yeah. still tickles me and gets a laugh out of me every time I see it. Yeah, yeah. I quite like that. It's very, the whole... very in, in keeping with like the traditional films and the older films and stuff. Yeah, I like the whole sequence on the, like the car chase where they're all fine mm. and stuff i thought that was great like yeah it may be a little over ambitious uh with the cgi there but i i, I didn't mind that movie at all i think mm. i saw it a couple of times actually i've got it on blu-ray uh, yeah yeah but some people don't even refuse to acknowledge it the guys on the empire Fo- podcast it's a running gag when this news story came out they were like they're making a fourth indiana jones <laughs> it's like they won't even <laughs> acknowledge that that one la- last one oh, happened dear. Which uh, I think there are worse movies in the world than that. Yeah, definitely. I, I definitely. Um, so yeah, speaking of Spielberg, um, uh, it's been announced that Simon Pegg will be joining the cast of Ready Player One, mm. which is the adaptation of the Ernest Cline book, uh, which is all about virtual reality and stuff, and mm. incredibly well timed. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. This this movie, if, if it, it's supposed to come out uh, 2018, by which time. Oculus Rift will probably be a household name. 
mine still I'm hasn't wondering, turned up. And uh, maybe you could float this idea in the uh, not playing podcast. But do you think that yeah. when the movie comes out, because you know Oculus is the idea of a virtual cinema. Yeah. What a nice little marketing bit that would be. <laughs> they could totally do that. Uh, you could, they could you, actually, like the premiere could be a virtual cinema. <laughs> if they most awesome bit of PR they could do would be to release it simultaneously in cinemas and on the Rift. Yeah. That would be cool. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? (laughs) Well, because if the only copy that they let out there was virtual reality, Hmm. like, it would probably be almost impossible to pirate it as well. (laughs) Yeah. If if they actually made it like VR, where... Because you'd have to spend a couple of hundred quid on a VR unit that could play it. Well, yeah, exactly. You couldn't, you couldn't bit strip. What would be the point? You'd have two screens on screen, and you wouldn't be able to see much. <laughs> no, well, that would—that's the kind of like exclusive content that o- Oculus should be doing, and mm. they should be like, as Spielberg's filming stuff. They should totally bear all that in mind. They, even if they do like some special features, they're gonna do it. They're so gonna they do have like, to do it, isn't it? they're gonna do like VR trailers for it. I reckon. <laughs> That'd and, just be uh, insane. Well, because they're starting to do that anyway with, like, Warcraft. Like, they put out that thing where you could, like, look 360 around, oh, uh, wow. just flying over Stormwind. Google it. They're, it's out yeah. there. Um, cool, cool. So, and they, they've done some stuff with Pacific Rim and stuff, although you have to have the gear. Mm. So I haven't tried it. And I think John Wick, they're doing something in VR for that as well. Oh, wow. So, so it's uh, really taking part now, isn't it? They're kind it, of merging mm. or gaming and it's going to be a media industry now, isn't it? Well, yeah, at Sundance Film Festival this year, uh, they had an entire virtual reality film thing. <laughs> it's insane, so it's, isn't it? It is. It's I still remember insane. when the Virtual Boy came out, looking yeah. into it and thinking my eyes were burning. Yeah. <laughs> Just, no, it's really, it's really it's happening so now. Um, well. Although I have no idea when my rift's turning up. Uh, <laughs> I was mad enough to pre-order one. Uh-huh. Um but yeah, Still I can't I, believe you've done that. But yeah, I, I know. <laughs> but I think uh, I think maybe June. I think I, I might be waiting that long. I think if you if you put an order on now, uh, August is the earliest you'll get it. Wow, Jesus! <laughs> they can't make them quick enough. <laughs> um, They're going to become like the Aston Martins, aren't they? It's just like yeah, <laughs> custom ones going out. This is um, the Oculus DB8. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. Oh dear. I, I'm I'm going to uh, EGX Rest on uh, next Friday, so only a four day week next week. Yay! Nice. Um, uh, but Friday I'm going. I've got pass for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, mm. but um, I don't know if I can be asked to go every day. And there's no developer talks until Thursday, cool. um, so I'm going to get to listen to some people talking about some games that are coming out so yeah you do wonder whether Teaser. the next star wars is going to be on that as well like, what on rift on a, yeah any sort of killer star wars app standing on top of a star destroyer looking 360 round or something well well on, a crazy uh, space battles going on or something at the game developers <laughs> conference a couple of weeks ago they had uh running on like a couple of supercomputers. um they're not intending to release it at all it was just uh industrial light and magic doing yeah. s- like, what can we do? Uh, just as, like, an experiment. Yeah, a technical demo sort of thing. Yeah, and they had, like, this sequence uh, on Tatooine where the Millennium Falcon flies over you and lands. Uh, and then uh, free, uh, R2-D2 comes out and you can then pick up a lightsaber and turn it on and deflect all these blaster bolts <laughs> as all these stormtroopers run at you. Like, oh, wow. live action. Oh, my God. With, like, uh, <laughs> ILM quality... Special effects. Jesus, that's insane. <laughs> and they said it was amazing, but like, probably not going to come to a, any device you have at home. <laughs> you ever. <laughs> but that's like, that's cool. I mean, I think a lot of like the whole virtual reality thing is uh, yeah. like the Vive, the uh, room scale stuff. That's like, I think that could bring back the arcade experience, you know, like where yeah. you go somewhere to do it. Yeah. Because it's dead now, isn't it? I mean, yeah, unless yeah, you find yourself accidentally somehow in Clacton or, you yeah. know, or sort of local well, to I where spent, we are. I was one of the generations that spent years in the arcades. Um, yeah. you know, I'd go out on the weekends and hang out and stuff. It was very much like Akira or Blade Runner. You know, these smoke-filled rooms with neon yeah. lights and stuff. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I cherish those memories of all that. Um, but, yeah, it's just something that doesn't happen now because mm. we have all the tech at home. 
Yeah. Which is a shame. But, um. Oh, well, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Should we get uh, back to your TV? <laughs> yeah, sorry, totally <laughs> diverging off topic there, but whatever. Um, yeah, yeah uh, there's some other news. Apparently, Daisy Ridley of Star Wars fame mm-hmm. uh, is has been tapped to play the new Lara Croft. Oh, really? Which I think, uh, do you think they're going for like the reboot Lara then? Uh, yeah. Well, if they do another Tomb Raider, it will certainly be a, a reboot, and I think if they reboot it, they will probably do what the follow like the tone yeah. of the new games i reckon cool um I, I i personally i was a bit like uh just because i feel like she's already playing that kind of part i know and and that's what there's making just a really easy leap aren't they oh, strong God, female just... character young um gets in something that's way bigger than she is grows as a person she has that already with the um with the ray Whatever her last name is. Yeah. Ray Storm? Ray Well, Bean? yeah, we don't know yet. <laughs> Ray Ray? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think... Yeah, I hope what happens to her doesn't happen... Like, what what happened to Emma Watson, for example, who's yeah. uh, a fairly recent, similar age, did all the Harry Potters, and even though she's still, like, definitely a name, a personality, mm. um, and she's done some all right movies but she's sort of fallen off the map a bit i think yeah. as far as films go um she's certainly not doing anywhere near as much stuff as daniel radcliffe for good or real i don't know he's uh hmm. he's managed to do all, i think all right, she's I think. kind of taken more the ambassador role hasn't she she's become a yeah. public speaker for a little bit and stuff um so who knows maybe she'll get back into stuff after that yeah I think she's taken a few years out she's doing a dicaprio <laughs> isn't she <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at a very early age. Um, but yeah, no, I, I kind of think the Tomb Raider film will be a bit weird because the games almost feel like films in themselves. Exactly. So I don't really know what they could lend to it because I'm sure any ideas they'd want to save for a third game. Yeah, this is it. I mean, I find the whole idea of um, games as movies pretty preposterous, really, because so many of the films they adapt are descended from films in the first place. Mm. It's like what is even the point it's just uh to me it just smacks of brand recognition uh built-in audience you know it's just a brand they're sticking up on a screen and please give us your money um which happens anyway yeah i mean you could say the same about comics but for me i i think comics uh comics are more towards the book sort of thing which a lot of films are adapted from anyway i mean it's a graphic novel uh, it's a story written in prose. The p- pictures help. Storyboard, tell the story. isn't it? Almost. Yeah, it's a storybook. It's like almost like a kid's book. But I would say the but. art of comics that I, I think is a, oh god, we're going to go into Zack Snyder thing again. But um, <laughs> he's obsessed with bringing that uh, comic book frame into live action. Yeah. Um, and he's good at it. He's almost it's his calling card. But I think sometimes with comics that one still image can convey so much more yeah. and have so much more impact than, you know, kicking people repeatedly through buildings. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 taking the best possible snapshot of a whole sequence, isn't it, to represent yeah, yeah. what's being said, um, which I always struggled with when I used to draw comics. Yeah. Uh, I used to, like, end up losing whole pages because of one panel that just didn't work. And you just think, God, <laughs> such a pain. Yeah. Um, yeah. One more bit of news here is that the Amazon Motor Show, which is essentially Top Gear. I don't know mm. why I cover this. I, I find it endlessly fascinating what they're doing. Yeah, this, no, no. I'm, I'm intrigued, actually, to be honest. Yeah, but it's coming at the end of this year. Um, okay. I actually caught a tweet from uh, <laughs> from Jeremy Clarkson in the week going... Uh, about to film the most dangerous thing I've ever done, so this might w- this might be goodbye. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> loonies! Uh, I do not- actually miss it being on TV. To be honest, I, <laughs> as much of an oaf as they can be, um, especially the tall, gangly, curly-haired, Clarkson. bad-mouthed one, Clarkson. Yeah. Um, I kind of miss them. It's almost like. They're complete arseholes, but there are arseholes, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome, to um, be honest. And also, apparently Top Gear is um, getting ready. I think they've dropped the trailer for it now. 
Yeah, so I might haven't be, watched They might it. be going head to head. Yeah, I think I think they are. Um, yeah, they released the trailer this week, but I haven't, I haven't caught that yet. <laughs> Maybe I'll uh, watch it now and stick it at the end of this. <laughs> yeah, there was a. Has, have, you, have you seen the Amazon advert with clocks in it? Uh, for uh, Amazon Fire, I think was it Fire the TV one, the little streaming stick. No, I haven't. And um, it's a bit where it's just the TV commercial. You've probably not seen it because I randomly watch only rarely watch TV myself. Uh, but um, it's a bit where he's going through all the channels and he goes, "Oh, you can, you've got everything you need here. You've got this and that, and you can watch oh, your shows yeah, yeah, and yeah. things." And he goes, and the BBC iPlayer logo is on there, and he goes, and there's that. <laughs> then skips over it. <laughs> <laughs> it was, wasn't long after the whole sort of incident thing. Oh, uh, really? But apparently he's been he's been on. Um, Have I got news for you? Which is the BBC show. Yeah, yeah, I saw him. I yeah, saw him. He do was that. on that. Uh, he's not allowed to mention cars or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Conflict kept of interest. Trying to get him to punch him, <laughs> which was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Um, I think that's about all I've got. As far as news, there's not really yeah. been much. No, it's. I think everything's happened pretty much. Yeah. This has been the Not Watching Podcast in partnership with notlistening.co.uk, where you can also hear myself and Ian talk about video games and virtual reality on the Not Playing Podcast, and Adam Ash and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening Podcast. You can email us at notwatchingpodcast at gmail.com, or you can tweet at or follow us on Twitter at notwatchingpod. You can also find the show notes of the show at notlistening.co.uk, and if you're listening to us on iTunes, then please do give us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. See ya. Bye. To Feel the heat, baby. <laughs>